Hi everybody. Um, welcome to the Cozy Cardigans podcast. My name is Mel. Uh, I am the owner and dyer for Big Little Yarn Co, which is a indie dyed yarn shop in the internet. So um, if you're new here, welcome. And if you're a longtime viewer, <laughs> welcome back. Um, so it is already the end of March, which is... I feel like I say this every single month, but time flies. It's crazy that it's the end of the month already. But I am looking forward to talking about my knits with you. This month I have been very busy. I started up my yarn shop again after coming back from the US. Oh, sorry, I live in Japan if you don't know. I live in Hyogo, Japan with my husband Tim and my son Everest. But uh, we were in America for the holidays up until the, towards the end of February. So this month I kind of just restarted the shop and got that going. So I've been a bit busy. So not as much knitting has been done, but a lot of yarn dyeing has been done. Uh, I just wanted to put in a couple of housekeeping stuff here in the beginning and I'll put whatchamacallit, timestamps um, in the description box down below if you want to skip any to any part or whatever. Um, no, no, no offense taken if you want to skip anything. But, um, sorry, let me make sure that you can see me properly. Okay, so the housekeeping. First off, if you are not on Instagram or if you're not signed up to my newsletter, I have announced that I will be keeping a ready to ship section in my shop available all the time. So those include like all of this stuff here. These are all extras from wholesale orders, from previous pre-order updates that I've done. So it's just kind of like a mishmash of stuff so if you need a dose of Big Little Yarn Co without waiting for pre-order dyeing there is a bunch of yarn in the shop right now that you could take a look at and I'm also planning on just kind of doing little bursts of restocks every now and then maybe bi-monthly or something like that once a month I'm not sure but a lot I recently just did a little restock or I added in my extra countdown calendars for newsletter subscribers and they sold out super quick so newsletter is probably the best way to get in on those drops if you are kind of looking for a colorway that I don't usually stock all the time I do recommend signing up for my newsletter because the newsletter is where I put my news first, other than YouTube. So I just want to put that out there. If you want to sign up for the newsletter, link is down below. And also, this video is coming out before I announce this on Instagram or the newsletter. <laughs> it just kind of worked out this way. So before I announce on the newsletter or on Instagram, I will announce it here because I don't really have another video lined up to correlate with my release schedule, but the quarter two of the Ghibli Club, so I'm on season two of the Ghibli Club right now. This is the second iteration. This is all new colorways from season one. I'll put some season one photos here if I could find them. Um, the This is quarter two, so quarter one I'll put the colorways I did Kiki's Delivery Service, I did Howl's Moving Castle, and oh my gosh, I'm blanking out. What else did I do? Oh, and My Neighbor Totoro. So I did those three movies already, so those have been done. I'm continuing on to quarter two. Quarter two, I will include the inspo photos here, but I will be doing Laputa, Castle in the Sky, um, Princess Mononoke, and 
Antonio. So here are the inspo colorways. I do a variegated yarn. So I do sock sets where, hmm, how should I explain this? All the info, it's, it's kind of hard to describe because the way I ship these items out is so that it's the most price cost effective in terms of shipping just because a lot of you guys are international from Japan. So what I do is every month there will be a limited amount of sock sets available to purchase. So each movie has a variegated colorway as well as a tonal colorway and that will be in sock set form every single month. So April, May, June, the beginning of each month will have a pre-order, uh, not a pre-order, kind of a pre-order sock set drop and that will be limited number because those will ship at the end of each month. So for those of you who only want, for example, the Laputa colorway, you can purchase it at the beginning of the month and it'll ship out at the end of the month. For those of you who want specific bases, quantities, and fiber, I will have a quarter long pre-order available for you. So if, for example, you want the Laputa colorway and the Princess Mononoke colorway and the Ponyo colorway, all three of those in these different sweater quantities as well as sock sets and fiber, you could order that all at once in one or multiple orders and I'll combine shipping for you and that will ship out at the end of June. So three months from April. Um, so those are unlimited quantities, well, unlimited as in as many as I could die up within those three months quantities, um, but you have your pick of bases and fiber and all that good stuff. So. If you are looking for more than just sock sets, that will be a great option for you because then you can combine your shipping and it'll ship out, everything will ship out at the end of June. So some options for you. I know it's a little confusing. I think I'll have like an info page on my website just to explain how it all works so that it's not as confusing. I usually... I will also put out all this info on my Instagram when the time comes. So if you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that. And if you are subscribed to the newsletter, you will see all the info as well. But hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email and I can explain it to you. But yeah, so that will be the pre-order will open on shoot. Finally decided on the day the pre-order will open on April 7th at 10 a.m. Japan Standard Time, which is, I believe, 6 p.m. PST and 9 p.m. EST. So here's the info. Put an alarm on. The I say it's unlimited, but I usually keep the pre-order open for about 48 hours just so Everyone international has their chance at ordering whatever they want without rushing. Um, but again, more info will be in the newsletter or Instagram. So there's that. You'll, you're, you guys are the first to hear. I hope I hope you're excited about the colorways as I am. I I always have a super fun time putting together all the color palettes and like the. Um, inspiration little graphics gets me really excited so I'm really happy and this will be the first time I'm also going to be having fiber available I'm kind of dipping my toes into that because uh, the fiber sold out super quick for the sets my pie order um, so I, I know you you all like fiber so I hear you and I will deliver so yeah that's I believe all the housekeeping for now. Hopefully that didn't take too long to talk about, but uh, let's move on to all the knitting stuff. So what I'm currently wearing, I showed this last wrap-up, last February wrap-up. This is the Coffee House Fade by S Knits. Um, this is knit in the Naughty Pine Fiber Co. 2023 advent calendar. 
and I have all the info about my mods and like what I did differently in my last episode and I'll put the link in the cards up here so that you can read about or hear me talk about that because it, it was quite a lot of modifications but I do really like it really quickly it starts from day one up here and then this is day 24 here I omitted the day 25 skein and it kind of mirrors on the body as well and this is how it fits it's just slightly cropped and it's like a, I'd say a three-quarter length sleeve I I do prefer a longer sleeve I kind of guesstimated I talked about it in the last episode but I kind of guesstimated the sleeve length just because how the pattern is written up um, so it ended up being a three-quarter sleeve versus a full-length sleeve, but I don't really mind that just because I wear my sweaters when I dye yarn anyways, and I just kind of always, I'm always pushing my sleeves up anyway, so it worked out. Um, but yeah, this is my newest, one of my newest sweaters. Anyway, so I do have one FO, one small FO, and those are, it is the Forest Fruit Socks by Sechko Bergen. And I'm sorry if I keep looking down at my lap, I have my notebook on here. But here they are. Super cute. I love how they fit. Um, really quickly, the yarn is, main skein is Apple View Fiber Co. I believe. Um, Colorway is November Mood on their sock base. And then this contrast color is the Day 25 skein, actually, for the Advent Calendar. This is Phantom of the North um, on her Bighorn sock base. And they just worked out really well together. I got the yarn. I got this yarn when I was in San Diego and at a little LYS there. And I had the day 25 skein as an extra, so it worked out. The last episode and then also, yeah, the last mid-month check-in episode, I think I was talking about how the lengths of the legs are a little different just because I believe this is the first one I'm in it. Just, I could even just tell like lining it up, that's how different they are but this first one I knit I knit using magic loop the color work portion I mean I knit using magic loop with a US2 and then I got my US2 shorty um, needles in the mail so I knit this with the shorties the nine inch circulars and then my gauge is super different let me see if I can line them up to show you, but you can kind of tell. I don't know if you can see. This one is like the leg is significantly longer. Not significantly, but like it's like a pretty stark difference, I guess, concerning socks. This one is taller than this one. And then also, I don't know if you can kind of tell, but this is a little wider than this one. So the taller slash wider one is the Magic Loop, the one I did using Magic Loop. And I think I was just kind of overcompensating with my gauge and was just knitting really loosely versus when I am knitting on the shorties, I'm kind of not as worried as much, I guess. So, and I'm just kind of zipping through the color work like easy peasy. So hence the tighter gauge. When I wear it, you really can't tell the difference. When you hold it together, you can really tell the difference. So, I mean, it, it worked out in the end. It's not a huge deal. I've worn these socks once already, and yeah, again, you really can't tell the difference between the two. Yeah, my calves are two different sizes anyway, so like, it's not, it's really not a big deal, but these are done, my first color work socks. I've done color work before, but these are my first like small circumference color work project. 
and I'm really happy with them. So I'm kind of obsessed now with like having color work on the cuff because I, I like to wear like loafers and like low, not low cut shoes, but you know what I mean? Like shoes that cut off at the ankle and then you kind of have that little fun bit hanging out above the shoe bit, if that makes sense. But yeah, I really like how these look with like my outfits and I'm obsessed with color work socks as you will see in a little bit. But yeah, this is my only FO, but this is a fun FO, so that's that's good. Yeah, that's, that's my FO. So on to the whips. So for whips, whip number one, I showed it to you last episode as well. I haven't been knitting as much just because I've been so busy with work and then I just go home, hang out with Evie and then read a book in bed and then go to sleep. So it doesn't look like much, but I mean, I've been trying to work on it as much as I could. So last episode I talked about how I completed, or I think I was in the process of completing my two sleeves. So I finished my sleeves and now I'm just working on the body. So what I like to do when it comes to sweater knitting is I like to first knit you know, as written in the pattern, like do the yoke, split for sleeves, all that stuff. And then I like to do the collar and then I like to do the sleeves and then I work on the body last. I just like to get all that small circumference knitting stuff out of the way. But yeah, once I'm done with the body, I'm pretty much done, done. And it's not, it's not a difficult body. I do really like having the stripes. It's very potato chippy in that way where I just kind of like count how many rows I have until the next stripe and just work on that. So yeah, it's just, it's been going. It's not, nothing to talk about much this month, I'm afraid, but it's getting there. I'm trying not to rush, you know, I'm trying to take it slow and I'm trying to be okay with just reading in bed sometimes and not knitting while reading and, you know, I'm trying to not be too intense about my knitting this year. So for example, I'm not signing up for any test knits this year. That is my, one of my goals for the year. No test knits for me. I just want to like take it slow. So it's gone slow, which is what I wanted. It's just, I'm sorry that there's not much to talk about. Um, another whip that I discussed last episode in the mid-month check-in is my little self-drafted tank top vest thing. Um, I think during the last that last episode I only had the ribbing done and I kind of have the first repeat done. Again, I'm taking it slow on my knitting, so sorry that it's not much, but I do really like how it's knitting up. This is how, ugh, how can I show this to you? This is how the um, pattern kind of looks like. So there's like little eyelets and then there's these slip stitch columns, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, it's going well. It is on the slipperier side and then also it's been really cold lately. When I casted this on, it got a little warmer. We had a bit of a warm stretch, like a warm weekend when I was knitting on this and then it got really cold again, it snowed a couple days ago too. So I'm back on the Kinsan sweater knitting, but I feel like I've been kind of like inching, not even inching, I mean, I've only gotten an inch on here, but I've been stitching away at this every now and then as well. Um, again, not trying not to be too hard on myself. It's kind of, I feel like as a self-employed, person with a yarny business. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot to talk about the yarn I was using. Well, the Kingston I've talked about him many times and I talked to him in the last episode, so I won't go into it, but for this one, I'm using the alpaca silk fingering my own yarn. 
I think last time I said it was in the amulet colorway, but it's actually the mutant colorway. Sorry, they, they look kind of similar. But this is the colorway mutant from my last Halloween spooky summer pre-order. So this is what it looks like in the skein. It's kind of messy because I took it from the from my shop because I realized that the skein got tangled. So I took it for myself because it's a bit of a oopsie skein. And yeah, I really like the, it's kind of like a muted dark teal, which I really like. And it's super drapey. Like you could tell just how the skein flops that it's gonna be very drapey. Well, anyways, what I was saying is that just because as like a self-employed person who has a very yarny centered business, whenever I make something for myself, like a pattern or a yarn or anything just out of my own head, I automatically am thinking business-wise of it. Like, how can I incorporate this into my business because a lot of my customers and a lot of my clients I feel like we all kind of share the same style like I know what I make you would probably be interested in um, obviously not everyone is going to be interested in whatever I make but usually there are people out there who are interested in what I'm making and how and if whether or not they can make it too which is totally understandable because I do that all the time so when I'm making this I'm kind of thinking about you and like how I can share this pattern with you but then also that's stressful as well because I'm kind of putting this expectation of myself to create this pattern even though I'm not really a pattern designer I have designed patterns before but it's not my main thing like my main thing is yarn dyeing so it is something I'm super interested in, but I just want to say, no, <laughs> please don't have expectations. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be sharing it as a design. I might, I want to, but also at the same time, it'll take, it'll probably take me a while because I'm, I'm busy dying yarn. So all that is to say, please don't, <laughs> please don't expect too much of me when it comes to pattern designing because I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> so I hope that makes sense but yeah I mean like oh and then I have one more thing I I don't have that much stuff to talk about this month because again I was just I've been super busy with you know yarn dyeing yarn planning ghibli planning also my next shop update will happen um like as a as in like a new collection will happen in April as well that'll be towards the end of the month though so don't worry about it I'll talk about that later excuse me but um yeah so not not a lot has happened but I hope that that's okay so one last uh, whip is another sock whip now that I finished the forest fruit sock so just like I talked about I'm obsessed with color work so here we are these are, let me see if it'll, will it focus? Mm, try not to have it focus on me too much, let me see. There we go. So here it is, here is my sock whip. Sorry if the outside noises are kind of loud, the cars are going by, but um, these are the Aita socks by, um, Oh my gosh. Jenny. Jenny Ansa. Of, um, I forget how to pronounce her Instagram handle, but can, I'm sure all the info's here. This is using my Satsumai Mopai sock set that I just talked about that I recently put out. Um, it uses two colors. This is the contrast color, Imo, which is sweet potato in Japanese. And then the main color here is uh, Satsumai Mo Pai, which is sweet potato pie. And sorry, Imo means not sweet potato, but potato. <laughs> Anyways, I finished the leg. 
and I'm using US size 2 needles on the color work as per usual and then I'm using the US ones for whenever there's no color work but I just did the turn the heel and right now I'm doing the gusset decreases so it looks kind of wonky but I love it I love how the two colors look together let me see if it'll there it goes I love how the colorways look together. It, I love how the purple pops against the Satsumaimo pie. It's really nice. Um, I will have just a little, little hint, hint. I will have some extras of, I believe I'll have some extra minis, just minis by themselves or um, Satsumaimo pies and other bases, just extras that I've had as I was dying up. So sign up for the newsletter if you want to check that out. But um, I love how they knit up. It, they are such a good duo. It's one of my favorite combos, honestly. But yeah, this is the Aita Socks. Jenny originally designed the Aita Socks using my see one of my season one colorways um season one ghibli colorways merry-go-round life and howl's coat which i put the original Ita socks here because i love those as well i was thinking about making them in the original colorway i do have a set for myself just waiting for me but uh i saw when I was making the Satsumaimo pie, when I was dyeing up Satsumaimo pie and emo, that they had to be the eye to sock. So it it's a very versatile, very simple, but like such a fun color work pattern. And if you haven't knitted color work socks before, I highly recommend it just because it's just one by one color work that kind of like shifts every now and then and it also follows on the foot. I'm sure I should have shown you the picture here. But yeah, they're just really fun, really simple and but like still it still pops if you know what I mean. Like it won't overpower your outfit or anything, but it'll still be like a fun sock to show off. So I am knitting that. This is my train knitting. As those of you who have been here know, I like to knit socks on the train. So that is my train knitting. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Not much stuff. So I hope that that's okay. That's all the knitting I have for today, if you can believe it. So sorry, the I know some of you like the longer videos. Sorry, it's not so long, but maybe those of you who... <laughs> Think my videos are too long are happy about it so hopefully it's okay I'm going to be talking about my books now I talked about the three books I've read like up to the mid-month point so these are the rest of the books I read over the course of March it's still towards the end of March it's not March hasn't finished yet so I still have some books that I'm currently reading that I'll probably finish before March ends but so far, these are the books that I have read since I've last talked to you. So my first book that I completed after that mid-month check-in was My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. I think I was reading that while I was filming the last episode. So I finished it and I really liked it. I haven't read a literary fiction novel in a long time, but so this is kind of like my dipping my toe back in kind of book but I really enjoyed it. I do really like kind of girlhood, friendship, drama, growing up kind of thing so I did really like the subject matter and also Elena Ferrante is just like a fantastic author like just how she writes is just very I don't know I don't know how she does it so I'd highly recommend that I gave that four stars. Another book I listened to on audiobook was Bookshops and Bone Dusts by Travis Baltry. This is the prequel to what was what was the f coffee 
I'll put the picture here. So this is the prequel to that one. Um, it's just like a low stakes fantasy novel where it's just cozy things happen and the action is action-y but not intense. Like you know everything's gonna be all right in the end kind of book. So it was that. It was good. It was pretty much what I signed up for and um, yeah I, I don't really have much to say about it. It's not like the most amazing fantasy that I've ever read but also it's just like good. It's like cozy fantasy action happens sometimes but mostly it's a bookshop where it's a bookshop that needs help and you're they're saving a bookshop and it's cozy and the characters are funny and sweet and kind and they're just trying to make things work in this cozy seaside town so yeah if you're looking for something low stakes just kind of it's kind of like a fun cozy movie to watch but like book wise then I highly recommend this and I gave this 3.75 stars um, the next book I read is The Deep Sky by Yumi Kitase and this is a sci-fi fantasy it's sci-fi futuristic sci-fi mystery novel which is interesting um, you follow this these group this spaceship full of people who have left Earth in order to colonize a faraway planet. Um, they just woke up from a 10 year kind of, what do you call it? Like, you know, when people go to like Cairo freeze or like go to sleep in a spaceship for 10 years and then they wake up and it's been 10 years, that kind of thing. So they just woke up from that and they're trying to start their lives again on the spaceship um but then something happens a few people die because of an explosion that seems kind of suspicious and the main character is tasked to solve the mystery so it's kind of like a sci-fi mystery but also a exploration into the main character's you know past and why she and these other people on the spaceship have chosen this life mission to like have chosen this mission that will essentially have them leave earth and never see their family members and friends on earth ever again so it was really interesting there were some parts where I was just kind of like you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and there are some parts where I just logically wasn't jiving with. But all in all the story was really good and it was very interesting and I did want to know what happened and who was involved in the end. I did guess the culprit of whatever problems they were having. There is the, the bad person. <laughs> I guessed who it was maybe like 50% of the way in so thriller slash mystery wise wasn't crazy but it was a good time so I gave that 3.75 stars another thriller that I recently finished is The First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston I listened to this while I was dying yarn and it was really fun actually I haven't listened to a just thriller action I guess not really action but like a thriller novel in quite a while where I was surprised by the end and I was surprised by the end um so you follow the main character who is kind of like a spy essentially like she is tasked by a mysterious Mr. Smith she is part of this organization where Mr. Smith tells her you have to you have this mission and you have to infiltrate this and pretend to be this person in order to, you know, complete the task, which she does very successfully. She's like one of the top agents in this mysterious, 
you know, criminal organization. And she is tasked to be... Hmm, like a fake girlfriend, but like... I mean, she knows she's not really his girlfriend, but he thinks she's his girlfriend kind of thing. Um, so pretty much infiltrate this guy's life to do this task that Mr. Smith has told her to do. And so she gets in there, starts doing her thing, but the mission is not as she has expected it to be. And so you kind of follow that down. It's kind of hard to describe because I don't want to give anything away, but it was a very good thriller. Um, I could totally see it being a movie, which is pretty fun. Um, I really like the main character and how she kind of goes about, like her thought processes made sense, like how she acted made sense, which I really like in thrillers. Like I have a hard time with thrillers where I'm just like, what, why would you do that? Like, why would you choose to do this instead of that? So it was kind of, it was logical, which was nice and intriguing and I wanted to know what happened next and the ending surprised me so four stars I don't really give thrillers I don't ever really give thrillers more than four stars just because I don't feel emotionally connected to it as much as I would to other genres but um this was a really fun thriller and I do highly recommend it and if you listen to it or read it please let me know if you saw the end coming but yeah those were all the books that I have read so far this month and I'm currently reading Lapfona by Tessa Moshveg and I read her book My Year of Rest and Relaxation a long time ago back when it first got published so it's been a while since I've read another one of her books and it's a historical fiction, dark historical fiction, I would say, um, where you follow a very delusional sheep boy <laughs> and his father, he and his father take care of the sheep in his little medieval village and um, he's weird, the father is weird, and weird things happen. <laughs> I've only gone like just a tiny bit into it, so I can't really say much about it, but if you're into weird characters with dark hints, hints of darkness, I recommend it so far. Um, I'm also I'm also currently reading Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov, and this is like pure sci-fi but also a mystery novel where you follow well it was written in the 1950s so it's futuristic for them but honestly it kind of sounds it sounds very 20th century except for certain bits but um a futuristic detective and a AI robot partner and the detective doesn't want to be partners with the AI robot but he kind of has to be. And so you kind of follow them figuring out what happened for this particular murder mystery. But um, it's not really my genre. I don't usually read books like this. I'm not super into hardcore sci-fi, but um, this is part of a book club that I'm in with my brothers-in-law and my husband. So this was one of the picks. So we'll see how it goes so far. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Ken, if you're watching. So far, it's okay. It's not my favorite. I don't really like how women are written by men during this time period. It's just like a, you know, part of its time. And I'm not really into that part, but what you gonna do? I'm trying to just read it for the plot. So. We'll see how that goes. But those are my two current reads. And um, I also wanted to share some podcasts I've been listening to. Maybe you guys will be interested in that. Um, and maybe you have some podcasts you can share with me. I used to listen to true crime 
podcast quite a lot before I had Evie, but now I can't really listen to true crime anymore just because I get too sad about it. So I've been listening to horror podcasts, which, okay, obviously, like, still horror is still horror, but, you know, I don't, I don't find them to be very true. So um, I like listening to horror podcasts. So I listen to Scared to Death and also, shoot, um, oh, Astonishing Legends. I just really like podcasts that are like really long and in depth about mythical and horror kind of thing. So if you do have, I also really like like um, when people speak about their horror experiences. I just like hearing people's stories. And obviously I'm not saying that they're not true. I'm saying that I find them quite distant from myself and my own experience to where I can listen to it without feeling emotional about it, which is hard for me for true crime. So not saying that those people's stories aren't true. I'm just saying that I don't find them to be applicable to my life situation. So um, yeah, if you have any horror podcasts to recommend, please comment down below. And if you have been reading something good, please let me know. I love talking about books with you and please let me know what you've been making and knitting and sewing and all that stuff. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that <laughs> it wasn't too boring, but if it was, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you in my next mid-month. So my next episode will be mid April, my mid-month check-in. So I'll see you then. Until mid-April, please be safe, stay cozy. Um, I hope you are all having a lovely beginning of your spring. I feel like some places have started to warm up, so enjoy your warming up springtime. And um, again, please sign up for my news newsletter if you have not already, because all the news all the info will be in those emails. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye.